I believe most of us are hungry now. <laughs> so I, anyway, I will uh, finish my presentation uh, quickly. Uh, so this is being from the uh, Chinese Academy of Science. So uh, today I want to introduce the uh, study about the basin scale surface water quality monitoring for the largest freshwater lake in China. Cannot work. So I will talk uh, in five parts. So as you know, in China, the um, uh, water is a big problem. Uh, the first one is the water has been uh, seriously polluted uh, in most of China. And the garbage and also the um, uh, industrial pollution has been uh, flowed to the river and lakes. Another one is the flooding. And uh, in this year, July, last month, the uh, uh, many uh, south of China, so many cities have been flooded. As you know, after the inundation area has been flooded, so the chemical and the pollutant will be transported uh, through the flooding. This map shows the spatial distribution of the surface water quality in China. As we can see uh, here, so here is the most uh, developed area in China. So it's uh, populated, populated and also developed. But uh, you can see the class one is the best water quality and it's the worst one. So we can see these parts, the water quality is not is very, very, very worst. And uh, we see the China Lake map here. We uh, the east part and west part. So these parts, the most lake is nature lake. So the city is very few. But in this part is the down, uh, mid and downstream of the Ch uh, Yangtze River. So these uh, lakes has been polluted uh, uh, from more than 20 years ago. And uh, we can see the Yangtze River Basin here. So here is the Shanghai and Nanjing. So this is Taihu, Lake Taihu, Taihu Lake. So this area is the most rich basin in China. And also the Lake Taihu has been uh, seriously polluted. And uh, here is the Poyan Lake is my topic it's because uh, because the Lake Taihu has been uh, polluted, so the Chinese government has been uh, put the many efforts on uh, protecting the water quality in the Poyang Lake because it's the uh, largest fresh water lake in China. So I will just take this one to protect the water quality. So Poyang Lake is the largest fresh water lake in China. The area is around 3,000 kilometer square, and the depth is around 25 meters, it's very deep. And the population is very huge, it's 45 million. So in Poyang Lake Basin, so we have four World Heritage Site and three National Historic uh, site and uh, two U.S. cultural parks. So here we can just see the Poyanik here. So uh, it's a Lusan mount mountain. It's around uh, it's very high mountain here. So we can just see the Poyanik here. It's very beautiful. Uh, about the water in Poyanik, actually, you can see the average and the highest lowest water level is uh, around uh, 10, uh, more than 10, uh, 9 to 15 meters. So it's a very uh, unique uh, characteristics in China. So after the uh, flow season and also the high uh, flood season, uh, the lake area has been changed a lot. Uh, this shows the uh, water quality and the uh, eutrophication uh, condition in China. So we can see Poyang Lake uh, now, uh, the eutrophication level is not so high. So that's why we have to put the effort to protect the water level or water quality in the Poyang Lake. Uh, so firstly, we have to uh, get data for the water quality. So uh, currently, we have the state key laboratory of lake environment in our institute. And also, we have the uh, Chinese Academy of Science Key Laboratory of Watershed Geography and the National Lake Watershed Database Center. We can share data from uh, this center. And we have uh, three floors, Poyang Lake Field Monitoring Stations here. So we just put data and uh, monitoring in the Poyang Lake. So our purpose is to just uh, conduct the water environment dynamic analysis concerned about the impact of the human activity and the nature uh, factors. So we want to know, so 
uh, among the agriculture segment and also the water quality extent and the industrial how these factors has, uh, affect the water quality in the Poyang Lake. As the, the slope scale, so we choose uh, different land use to just to get the uh, uh, water quality for soil moisture and the water rainfall and the groundwater and also for the uh, rivers. So we just put the uh, monitoring equipment in different uh, land use to get the uh, slope scale water quality data. In the catchment scale, so we just use the remotion data and we just choose the forest, paddy field, and also the pond and the lake and also rivers to get the uh, ground uh, monitoring data to uh, conduct the catchment basin scale model. And for the regional scale, we use the uh, for lake part, for lake part and for catchment part. So for each rivers, we have five rivers. Uh, follow into the Lake uh, Poyang. And uh, we can just uh, monitor the data uh, in the uh, river mouth of the each rivers. So we can just get the uh, data uh, in the whole uh, regional scale Poyang Lake. This shows the uh, example of the data, the river discharge and also the water level in the uh, different uh, the, um, uh, uh, rivers. So we can just uh, monitor the river water quality and also the water level for each uh, rivers following to the Lake Biwa, uh, Lake uh, Poyang. So we can just use the river uh, discharge and the water quality to uh, calculate the uh, nutri nutrition node not, not in the rivers and lake. So we can show, see here, so here actually is the biggest uh, city in Poyang Lake. So the uh, nitrogen and the phosphorus nodding is the very highest in the uh, Ganjiang River basins. And here is Zaohe, is the very many uh, plants here. And also we have the sediment problem here. So it was the phosphorus situation is also good. And also for a ground for sampling point, so we have uh, our colleagues from China University of Geoscience, we uh, also uh, collect data for the whole uh, uh, surrounding the, the Poyang Lake to so get the ground, table, uh, ground data for chemistry. But the, uh, this shows the result about the water quality of the groundwater. So we can show just the groundwater quality actually is, has been uh, highly impacted by the uh, industrial uh, and also the agriculture uh, activities. So uh, after we get data from the water uh, quality monitoring, so how can we use the data? So we are uh, now using the lake model and also the base model to uh, predict the water pollution in the lake and also the basin scale. So the main purpose is to like the uh, use the uh, uh, generally use the model C equal to W two model, and also we get the water quality real discharge and also climate data for uh, whole basin, and uh, to calculate the nitrogen, nitrate, ammonia, and also temp temperature for the whole basin and also the uh, lake water. After this, so we will put the uh, regional climate model, the GCM model result, and to, to see the extreme weather. Because uh, from our monitor data, we can find in the season of the flooding and also the high temperature, the water temperature, uh, the water quality uh, somehow has been uh, become more serious. So we want to see. So in the situation of the extreme weather, so how the uh, these factors have been affected on the water quality. So we use the spatial drift uh, nitrogen for the flow model to see, so for different scenarios, how the uh, nitrogen and the phosphorus loading has been impacted uh, for the lake and water and the uh, basin scale, the river waters. So this shows the example of the, of the uh, distributed hydrogen model. We can see the river discharge can be uh, simulated very well, but for the uh, water, water quality, I think for the peak part and the low flow part, the uh, result not so good. 
So we uh, we also uh, conducted the uh, uncertainty analysis, but this model part actually uh, the um, uh, we have some uh, uncertain problem about the water quality collection. So the modern part is just started. And uh, for the leak part, and uh, it's just to use the example of the model output, we just uh, uh, use the uh, uh, the uh, export from the basin skier, the uh, nitrogen and the phosphorus and COD uh, loading, we can just simulate the uh, spatial and temporal distribution of the COD, DO, and T, uh, total nitrogen like that. And also for the inundation, because here is a young river, so now we have put another project on the uh, real mouth. So we want to see after the project has been launched, so how the lake water level has been uh, affected by the Yangtze River. So we also uh, simulated the, the inundation in the uh, Poyang Lake. So uh, the change and the problem, uh, the, actually this problem also is almost same, similar uh, with the most of research here. And, uh, uh, the first is the information gaps because in the Poyang Lake Basin we have many uh, department and institution. So uh, recently we have uh, uh, launched one office. The office is the Mountain River Lake. Mountain is the uh, Lake uh, Poyang Lake Basin. Uh, river is the five rivers to the Poyang Lake. Lake is the Poyang Lake. So we launched one of new office about the Mountain River Lake Development Committee. So this committee, we are uh, communicated in university, uh, Chinese and science, and also hydraulic uh, department and the UN department. So we can share data and information and also report the policy from the government. So we just to, uh, to reduce the information gap through our effort. Another is the uh, problem is the uh, parameters because the monitoring uh, is uh, very huge. So we need um, uh, a lot of the, 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 uh, the funding to, 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 to install the instrument. So for groundwater and for the surface water, real water, lake water, we, uh, so far, so most of the seven parameters have been uh, monitored. So uh, depending on the project, we will just choose some uh, important site to get more information about the water chemistry. And uh, uh, this also has been mentioned uh, by uh, our research last day. Uh, so uh, as we know, we can see this is the river network. So uh, here is the runoff station. This is the water, water uh, chemistry station, water quality station. So, so in uh, most of uh, places, the water quality station and the water quantity station, they are not the same place. So they are uh, not so combined in the uh, different uh, department. So we have to, the, the, the committee have to uh, communicate uh, to get data and to build more. Because in China, this kind of uh, river network is not so easy to build the uh, river network because the, uh, the station has been controlled and managed by different uh, department. And uh, uh, for the uh, effective communication with society, so we uh, already uh, put uh, many effort to uh, get more public uh, participation through different uh, department and also for the local people. So we can just uh, report our results and also the data on the internet. So the uh, official will just uh, control data and also give us give us the uh, feedback to the report, also the uh, feedback, the data monitoring and the model result. And uh, another problem is the most the data and also the website uh, is only available in Chinese, so not so international. So this, this also is a shortcomings. So we have many uh, monitoring sites, but still very local part. And uh, for the rural area, we also need some more the monitoring uh, stations. Yeah, so sorry, the time is, so I've just uh, show the, so from monitor model, how to get the result to the society. So we just, uh, so it's before now, so from data to forest, we have put many effort to uh, change the nature, and uh, we can also build many 
water treatment system. And uh, finally, I want to show five pictures to show good example to predict the environment in rural area. Actually, I rated this year, uh, the Miyama uh, village in, in Japan, in Kyoto uh, prefecture from uh, here around one hour. So I think it's a very good example to protect the rural area. So we can see the water, air, and also the uh, environment is very good. So I think the Miyama is a very good example to discover the rural Japan. So if you have time, please go there to study some things. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I have a question. Uh, what kind of I have a question. Uh, thank you for your inter very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, what kind of uh, satellite data do you use? Uh, we use uh, uh, different. One is the quicker bird, one is the MODIS, and also because we have the uh, data center, so we have the most specialists in our institute. So we, we, we use five or six uh, uh, product. Yeah. Uh, the distributed lake model is one layer or three dimensions? Uh, three, uh, uh, three layers. Mm -hmm. Three yeah. layers? Yeah. Oh, I see. It's interesting to combine. Yeah. If you have any question for him quickly, or please uh, do it very quickly. Okay, uh, Professor, thank you very much for your nice presentation. Uh, actually, I'm from Jiangxi province. So I, yeah. I'm very familiar with here. So I want to know, so now Poyang Lake, it is uh, uh, utilized or not? And uh, according to what I know, Jiangxi government will develop a big industrial zone in, uh, around the Poyang Lake. So what is the possible impact of uh, this, of the development of this industrial area. So in the future, I mean the pollution in Poyang Lake will be become more serious or not. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think uh, we will become more serious actually. So now, you know, you can see here, uh, now uh, we have another project to about the transfer the industry from Shanghai, Nanjing to inland area. So because uh, here already were developed uh, area. So in Jiangxi province and Wuhan uh, area, so this area is somehow poor. So we have to uh, transfer, because Jiangxi province, they hope to uh, import the industry to the province. So we are now focused on how Excuse to me, uh, reduce the... So I, I would like, uh, sorry, uh, but, uh, I would like to cross this session because of the time is uh, limited. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, Okay, thank you.